Hello, and welcome to my general guide for door dashing in 2022. My name's Nick, and I've been dashing since 2019, and I now believe that I've developed sufficient insights to share my knowledge to anyone who's interested in becoming a dasher, or are already a dasher and are interested in hearing my personal methods and strategies to potentially help you optimize your dashing performance. But before we get on to the video, I just want to encourage you to share, like, comment, or subscribe on this video. A lot of effort and consideration does go into every single one of my videos and it's extremely tough to get off the ground as a new content creator nowadays. It's just it's pretty difficult. And even the most minuscule support really does go a long way for me in providing this kind of content, as I will then know that my topics and material actually help someone. Anyways, uh, let's get right into it. I'm going to be covering topics in a somewhat sequential manner for factors you need to consider beginning door dashing and onto the experience itself. Signing up for DoorDash is extremely simple with all you really need to do is show proof that you have valid means of transportation and a driver's license for the background check and you're good to go. Now, your means of transportation and how you go about doing deliveries is one of the most important things to consider when dashing if you are aiming to make acceptable profit or any at all. You are an independent contractor and are not an employee under DoorDash as they do not themselves directly even provide any tax information regarding your income. All of that is done through their uh, third party partner, Stripe Express. You'll have to first verify your information through Stripe Express using whatever information you provided upon sign up for DoorDash and then you will receive your 1099 form to use when filing taxes. If you aren't signed up, you should receive an email telling you to. Stripe Express also keeps record of the totality of your earnings while dashing. You also aren't provided with any guarantee of pay or benefits such as auto insurance, etc. And you will have to account for that yourself. Despite these apparent negatives, you attain all of the fantastic benefits of being a, a contractor, such as being able to determine your own work hours. It's pure performance-based work that has the potential to become mildly addictive if you enjoy working and you don't have much going on in your, your spare time. Guilty as charged. Now, circling back to my previous point, accentuating your method of transportation, I primarily use my car. I own a fairly decent electric scooter and gave it a try a few times. And let's just say that in my city in particular, your safety shrinks considerably if you are not in a car and are trying to get somewhere in something that's not a car. And even that is questionable. But if your city allows non-life-threatening bike or scooter riding, then what I'm going to be talking about next really won't apply to you that much. I'm talking about the importance of gas mileage maintenance in regards to your dashing experience. As a car owner, I highly recommend always being aware of your car's mileage performance anyways, as it helps you to make sure that your car isn't running into any problems. You have a few options here. You can track your mileage manually by simply taking record of the amount of miles you traveled before each gas refill. The vehicle I use is a 2014 Mitsubishi Mirage and it has a fantastic gas mileage for this purpose specifically. Where I only typically have to spend around $13 for a full tank of gas here in my city, Baton Rouge, gas is around $2.60. Now all you need to do from here is calculate your car's gas usage for every mile and estimate how much you'll be paying for every mile you use. A simple way to calculate what you can expect out of your gas mileage is by calculating your miles traveled versus the amount of gas you had used in your tank previously. It's always good to use your full tank but you can also use a percentage of it. I traveled 200 miles last week, roughly using 4.7 gallons of gas in from the tank. So we would have our miles traveled and divide that by the amount that we had in our tank previously, which equals 43 miles per gallon rounded up. This costed me roughly $12 to refill. It's tedious keeping a manual record of how much you travel and the expenses as, as such, so. That's why I highly recommend using an application to help you track your mileage so that you can keep uh, track of it a little bit more conveniently. You can use whatever application that suits you. I personally use Stripe as a mileage tracker as it's entirely free and it's simple to use and manage. 
with all you having to do is remember to activate it when you're driving. Having the knowledge of how much you spend simply driving around is extremely important to consider in your decision making when dashing. So make sure you aren't expending more resources than you're making while dashing at all. This will lead me into my next point, getting into the experience. When you first sign into the application, you will immediately start off on the dash tab. There are two other important tabs, which are earnings, where you'll be given all of your earnings information for the past few weeks, along with the current week. An important metric that is also given here is the tip amount versus the base pay amount which I will be discussing in a little bit, and your active versus dash time. Your dash time is the sum amount of the time you are active, including your idle time, whereas active time is the amount of time you spend on delivery. You can use either metric to calculate your hourly rate of pay, but for the most accurate measurement, you would want to use the total dash time. You also have your earnings versus balance. It's important to know that your balance is the amount of available funds that you have at your disposal, where the total earnings simply displays the summer earnings um, that pay period. DoDash usually releases your balance um, in full every Tuesday, but you have the option of using FastPay for a fee of $1.99 that instantly deposits to your bank account at any point. They also have a DoorDash Direct program that allows you to sign up for free for, for no fee instant deposits anyways, but I won't be discussing it here. In general, you will be checking the earnings tab quite a bit. Now moving on to the ratings tab. It displays your customer rating, acceptance rate, completion rate, on time and early rate, and total lifetime deliveries. DoorDash has an incentive program for these metrics called Top Dasher where in order to qualify, you must have a customer rating of at least 4.7, an acceptance rate of at least 70%, a completion rate of at least 95%, had completed 100 deliveries last month, and have at least 200 lifetime deliveries. The benefits are essentially the ability to always dash despite dasher demand and priority for high-end orders. I've never been a top dasher, and when I could have, I had less than 200 deliveries. As of now, it is quite unreasonable to obtain simply because of the acceptance rate metric and the problem of base pay, which I will talk about once we get to taking on deliveries. The only consequential metric that you have to be concerned about on this page would be the completion rate, as you can be deactivated if it falls below 80%, and it takes quite a bit to improve it. Now let's go back to the dash tab. The dash tab is where you start and schedule dashes and view dasher demand. Dasher demand is signified in four levels, gray being there is no demand for dashers, you couldn't dash now unless you're a top dasher, light red meaning there is minimal demand for dashers, light red with busy having moderate demand for dashers, and very busy with dark red meaning that there is a high demand for dashers. You also have a promos tab where DoorDash lists incentives for dashing by increasing their base pay and even giving certain dashers goals to complete in order to gain more money. Now I'll go over some strategies on how to navigate through your options here. I want to make it clear that dasher demand doesn't determine the amount of orders you will receive. You could decide to dash on low demand and receive more orders than when it's listed as busy you will generally make the most money when you receive consistent orders. That's why knowing a generally good time of day is excellent when your city is almost always in low demand for dashers. And that seamlessly ties into my next point. If there is virtually no demand for dashers, you will probably never have promos or incentivized pay unless it's late at night or during specific events. If this isn't the case for you, then some of this advice really won't apply, but it still would be helpful. But scheduling is a great tool to take advantage of when there is absolutely no demand for dashers. I personally never had to use scheduling unless there is absolutely no demand and I wanted to at least get my foot into the door. Now, starting your dash, if you are dashing now, you are given a list of available end times to choose from depending on demand. Note that you may be booted out of this if you are too late in selecting the end time in low demand. Once you set your end time, you are locked in. Next, you're given checks to make sure you have enough gas, your red card, your carrying bag, etc. After that, you will be greeted by your active dash interface. The red areas with the fire symbols are hotspots that show popular areas that increase the chance of you receiving a delivery. 
but I would recommend actively going to one if it's inconvenient for you. Is it simply just marginally increases the chances of you getting an order and can change it any second. The app only refreshes them after roughly 10 minutes or so, but they can still change despite that, so keep that in mind. You also have the amount you made the stash as well as the extra settings tab and the help tab. The extra settings tab allows you to pause in dash and extend your dash. You can also end your dash by backing out and then selecting in dash. The help tab is where you'll go to when you encounter any troubles during your dash and resolve them, such as unassigning delivery or reporting a closed store. If you simply unassign a delivery using the unassigned delivery option, you will suffer a penalty in completion rate, and which would result in you becoming deactivated if it falls too low, as I previously mentioned. You can bypass this penalty by simply talking to a support agent under the dash or help and getting them to resolve the issue for you. In the past, this wasn't a big issue and it was a, a much better experience. But now, as you can see, this has become extremely tedious and frustrating when you have to wait over 10 minutes when you have an issue and your pay is on the line due to an error. But this is just a complaint as this is the only way to resolve major issues and malfunctions such as that. All right, now we're moving on to some of the most important tips I can give when getting into the experience. In the past here, DoorDash had a base pay of $3 and was honestly way more reliable than its current state now as it actually did feel like it changed depending on you know, the, the given um, delivery difficulty or something like that. It's $2.75 now, and this is different depending on your area, so it may not be the case to wherever you are, but it, it is here. Now, the company describes this improved base pay as increasing upwards to about $10 given ambiguous features such as desirability and etc., which doesn't exist as a displayed metric anywhere in the app itself. They claim that this was an improvement, but given what I've seen, it's quite shameful when compared to the old base pay. And it is somehow worse than it was originally anyways, and further inflates your dependence on tips. First off, let's go back to our math. The way that you want to accept dashes are determined by these two things, time and demand. With time being how quickly you expect to complete a delivery, and demand being how long you would have to wait for another delivery. For instance, take this delivery. It's 9.5 miles for just $10. If you are familiar with the store's speed at preparing orders and are confident with the drive and demand is low, you will definitely profit from this delivery. You aren't given how much base pay is for an order unless you accept it, but it's usually safe to assume that 80% of this amount is in the tip. If this delivery showed up when demand is fairly average even, you probably would not accept this delivery unless you started off far away and needed to get to your, your usual dashing area in the first place. The sweet spot for most deliveries is roughly double the mileage or close to that. Now, remember base pay again and how it's supposed to just based on desirability and other ambiguous things? Look at this delivery for example. 11.2 miles for $6.25. This is roughly or almost the complete opposite of what I previously just said about orders you'd want to accept. This by all means is undesirable regardless of the situation. Even if base pay was adjusted to make this amount, it is still far from an acceptable order at any time or demand to accept unless you you know you were closer to it but this this generally shouldn't be the case if you're given like an order like this it really should list desirability expect this to be the norm when it comes to deliveries you see unless you work in an area that tips magnanimously or you are always in high demand which comes back to the acceptance right here this isn't the case for everyone but in a circumstance where you are presented with a non-profitable delivery you should always decline them and move on as quickly as you possibly can in order to not miss a potentially uber profitable order. If base pay function as advertised or reliably 
and rewarded dashing undesirable orders or even listed the desirability of orders you receive, it would be so much better in my honest opinion. Also, in order to decline, simply press the decline button at the top and you will then be perceived to be assaulted by a ton of different reasons of why you decline. Simply disregard these and press anyone. It's simply to somewhat penalize you declining orders. DoorDash does make its money from how many orders are completed, so keep that in mind. It usually takes around 30 seconds for an order to time out, so make sure not to waste too much time when approached with an undesirable order. As you complete more and more dashes, you'll be able to determine the ideal schedule and stratagem you'd like to implement, as well as learning more about the places in your city you will usually never go to and familiarize yourself with them while making money at the same time. That's another overlooked boon of dashing that I am really appreciative of. Is this application perfect? Absolutely not. It's it's primarily the fault of many questionable business practices such as the hidden tip thing and, and base pay in its current state. I won't talk too much about hidden tips as to this day, I really can't understand them or even talk about them accurately because they are extremely rare and extremely sketchy still and i i haven't received a hidden tip in um as as long as i could remember and i still actively dash it's just primarily a shameful tactic in making you accept undesirable orders in the hope of a secret tip at the end but despite this with experience you could still make a decent amount of money and it is an excellent side job when compared with a primary job, school, internship, etc. Door dashing full time isn't something I recommend, as it can be extremely unhealthy when it's in a time of low demand. It's important to set a goal or a quota within reason to achieve in order to avoid unhealthy habits. If you have any questions or insights to share with me, just let me know through the my social media links. That's all I've got for you guys right now, and see you in the next video. Hey, glad to see you made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. TPG out!